Hi guys, this is Rashid and you're watching Step by Step Robotics. So today I would like to show you one of the mobile robot applications since I started learning programming. So it is human following robot. So the idea of this robot is it would just keep following human that it can detect in front. And then um, using the D425 Intel RealSense camera, which can provide the depth information. So I just apply the basic algorithm that when the object is far, the robot just go fast. And then when the object is getting closer, the robot just slow it down. So once there's something in the stop zone, no matter what the object is, the robot will just stay in the place for safety. So I have done this human following robot so many times with different UGV types and with different flight controllers and with different object detection. So for today, I'm going to use this AT Bucky, which is the four wheel drive um, UGV. So first, let's see what is the hardware on this guy. Okay, so this is the UGV base for the human following robot that we're going to use for today. This is the AT Bucky and it's a four wheel drive. So you can see from the wheels that it's really huge and it can have a high payload. So we can put the kind of heavy load on here and let the robot follow us while we are walking. And uh, let's see what is inside of this controller box. So the first one here is the uh, place we, where we can put the battery inside. So first let's open this and here is a six cell battery and on top here this is the uh, high current motor driver which is going to drive four of these motors and we can just um, give the PWM left and right to this driver and it's going to drive as it is. So the next controller box here at the back is um, where we place the electronic um, components. So I'm going to use the Jetson Nano 2 gigabyte, which is really cheap Jetson Nano. Um, I'm still using the Q Pilot Purple for the flight controllers, which is going to take care about the uh, mission planning by using the GPS. So for the human falling mode, I'm going to use Jetson Nano which is going to run the object detection and send a mapping message to the cube to drive the wheels. So these are the RC component, which is the uh, radio receivers and the telemetries and the u -back. And this is the Wi-Fi router, which I'm going to use for debugging and some of the DCDC -DC regulator. So it's a very simple controller box. So let's check on the front here. So you will see that there is a D435 cameras which have a really long USB cable going into inside that, of that box. And I'm using here three GPS for the outdoor navigation. So we can switch the mode between human following and the auto mode, which is gonna run in the waypoints. Okay, so before we're gonna test the robot, the human following, I would like to show you about the codes and we're gonna test it indoor at first and after it works quite good, we're gonna move it outside and test it on the road. So first, let me show you what is the code that I'm gonna run. So here, um, these are the code for the human following robot that I'm gonna use. So there's two Python script, the cube human follow.py and detection one.py. So these two scripts are gonna run uh, in parallel and it's gonna communicate between the, the script by using the UDP socket. So um, let me show you the detection one.py at first. So this is the UDP socket parameters so I'm gonna use the detection port as this one which is gonna send the detection data to this port and the QPM and follow gonna listen the detection data on this port and the scan port is the um, I'm gonna take the one pixel line in the middle of the screen and it's gonna get the depth information of that one line pixel to check the um, closest distance when there is some object in front of the camera. 
and this is the camera trigger port which uh, this grip gonna listen for the Q pilot so when I change the mode to the human follow so we're gonna close the real sense camera and this is the detect net which is the object detection which provide by the NVIDIA so you can check more detail about the detect net from that's the NV lepo and just an inference and we're gonna start the loop from here so this is the listening function that I'm gonna listen for the camera trigger flag which is outside the loop so this is the real loop that we're gonna run the real sense camera and the detection so once we got the camera off as fault it's gonna enter into this while loop so once we enter this loop i'm gonna start the pipeline the real sense pipeline here and it's gonna just enter this condition only one time so once we got the frames of the real sense we can get the color frame and the depth frame and then we can make the depth image and color image so this is the scan line function that I'm gonna get the depth from the middle center of the frame and here we are gonna need to convert the, the CV2 frame into the CUDA frame so once we got the CUDA frame, we can pass it into the detect net and we're gonna get the detections data. So I just care about the class ID equal to one, which is human. So I'm gonna get the center of the box. So we can know that how far the human from the camera while I'm using this loop. So if there's nothing got detect, I'm just gonna clear the data out. And then I'm gonna send the data to the detection socket and the scan socket. And lastly, I'm gonna show the detection result by using the CV2 M show here. So on the cubehuman follow.py, um, I'm using drone kit uh, Python model, which we can communicate with the cube by using the Python script. And the parameters for the cube pilot is expanding here. So there are three zones that uh, the robot's gonna operate. So the first zone is the stop distance. If the depth information that we got is less than the stop distance, the robot gonna stay still at the same place. But if the human stay from 0.7 to 1.5, the robot gonna skate in place. And if human is far away, more than skate distance to the max chase distance, the robot gonna chase to the human. So we're gonna start the loop from here. So we're gonna keep listening for the detection data from the detection socket and also the scan line socket. So once we got some data, we need to decide what we're gonna do. So first, if I switch the RC channel to high, I'm gonna enable the human follow features. So if there is something in the scan line, which is less than stop distance. I'm gonna set the steering and throttle PWM to the middle and the robot's not gonna move. But once if the obstacle is gone, it's gonna try to do something else. Okay, so now I'm opening up two terminals, uh, which is still in my PC. So I'm gonna log in into the robot. So here, one of the terminal, I'm going to run Python 3 and detect1.py, which is a detection. And another script, I'm going to run Python 3, cubehumanfollow.py. But before that, I'm going to disarm the robot for a second because my script going to arm the robot. Then I'm going to start the script. So I'm also capturing the output frames of the just a nano detection so you can see this is the um, depth frame and the color frame of the depth camera okay so the script is arming the robot 
and then it just set the camera to off but it's okay we can turn it on by our channel 8 on the transmitters so right now I'm gonna go in front of the robot so here it still doesn't move because I still didn't turn on the channel 8 too high so once I turn it on you will see the robot's gonna move so here the robot is in skidding mode so if I come to the center of the robot it will stop, stop skidding so if I go to here it will try to skid to my side so if I out of the skid zone into the chasing zone you start to chase myself So once there is something in front of the camera, it will just stop immediately, for example, here and then, yep, it will stop immediately. So this is a scan live feature that I just told you before. Yeah, so no matter what object it is, it will just stop immediately. Okay, so for the human following features, it's worked quite fine and also the speed is quite reasonable. So next we're going to move it outside and do some tests again with the waypoints and human following. So for the waypoints, you will need to set up the queue properly and I already did that. And if you want to know how to tuning up the PID and set up the cube for the cart, so I recommend you to check out on my videos how to make the autonomous robot. So I'm going to make the waypoint in the mission planner and let it run in auto mode like the regular um, auto mode in Adobe Pilot. And then I can switch on the channel 8 to turn the human following features to let it follow myself. And that is for today's videos. I hope you guys like it. 
So this robot is going to be sent to the customer side and test the human following and waypoint navigation as I just shown to you. So there's still some improvement that we can do because this is just a first time demonstration. So as you may know that if you are using the Intel RealSense with the USB 3 cable, it's going to generate high frequency noise with going to interference with the radios and it's going to affect on the GPS accuracy. So we need to make some like better shield for the USB 3 device with some aluminum and better to place the GPS and this device quite far away and that can be helped for uh, an improvement of the accuracy of the GPS. So if you would like to know more detail about the object detection that I'm using, please go check out at the GitHub repo, that's the NV, that's an inference. It's a good place to study the AI. And if you want to know how to set up the Adu pilot for the outdoor navigation for the waypoint, you can check out on my old videos. So if you like this kind of video, please press like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you soon.